stomach. Gastric secretion. Introduction. Each day, the stomach secretes about two liters of gastric juice. The cells that secrete gastric juice are in the lining of the stomach, the gastric mucosa, which is divided into two distinct areas. Oxyntic mucosa, which lines the body and fundus, and the pyloric gland area, PGA, which lines the antrum. The luminal surface of the stomach is pitted with deep pockets formed by infoldings of the gastric mucosa. The first part of these invaginations are called gastric pits, at the base of which lie the gastric glands. A variety of secretory cells line these invaginations, some exocrine and some endocrine or paracrine. Gastric exocrine secretory cells. Three types of gastric exocrine secretory cells are found in the walls of the pits and glands in the oxyntic mucosa. Mucus cells line the gastric pits and the entrance of the glands. They secrete a thin, watery mucus. The deeper parts of the gastric glands are lined by chief cells and parietal cells. The more numerous chief cells secrete the enzyme precursor pepsinogen. The parietal, or oxyntic cells, secrete hydrochloric acid, HCl, an intrinsic factor. Oxyntic means sharp, referring to these cells as potent HC1 secretory product. These exocrine secretions are all released into the gastric lumen. Collectively, they make up the gastric digestive juice. A few stem cells are also found in the gastric pits. These cells rapidly divide and serve as the parent cells of all new cells of the gastric mucosa. The daughter cells that result from cell division either migrate out of the pit to become surface epithelial cells or migrate down deeper to the gastric glands where they differentiate in the chief or parietal cells. Through this activity, the entire stomach mucosa is replaced about every three days. This frequent turnover is important because the harsh acidic stomach contents expose the mucosal cells to lots of wear and tear. Between the gastric pits, the gastric mucosa is covered by surface epithelial cells, which secrete a thick, viscous, alkaline mucus that forms a visible layer several millimeters thick over the surface of the mucosa. The gastric glands of the PGA, pyloric gland area, primarily secrete mucus and a small amount of pepsinogen. No acid is secreted in this area, in contrast to the oxyntic mucosa. Exocrine products Hydrogen ion and chloride secretion The secreted hydrogen ion is not transported from the plasma, but is derived instead from metabolic processes within the parietal cells. Specifically, the hydrogen ion to be secreted is derived from the breakdown of water molecules into hydrogen ion and hydroxyl ions within the parietal cells. This hydrogen ion is secreted into the lumen by a hydrogen potassium ATPase pump in the parietal cells' luminal membrane. This primary active transport carrier also pumps potassium into the cell from the lumen. The transported potassium then passively leaks back into the lumen through luminal potassium channels, thus leaving potassium levels unchanged by the process of hydrogen secretion. The parietal cells contain an abundance of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase, CA. In the presence of carbonic anhydrase, the hydroxyl ion generated by the breakdown of water readily combines with carbon dioxide, which either has been produced within the parietal cell by metabolic processes or has diffused in from the blood, to form bicarbonate. The generated bicarbonate is moved into the plasma by a chloride bicarbonate antiporter and the basal lateral membrane of the parietal cells. Driven by the bicarbonate gradient, this carrier moves bicarbonate out of the cell into the plasma down its electrochemical gradient and simultaneously transports chloride from the plasma into the parietal cell against its electrochemical gradient. By building up the concentration of chloride inside the parietal cell, the chloride bicarbonate antiporter establishes a chloride concentration gradient between the parietal cell and gastric lumen. Because of this concentration gradient, and as the cell interior is negative compared to the luminal contents, the negatively charged chloride pumped into the cell by the basolateral antiporter diffuses out of the cell down its electrochemical gradient through chloride channels in the luminal membrane into the gastric lumen completing the chloride secretory process.
In the meantime, the blood leaving the stomach is alkaline because bicarbonate has been added to it. Functions of hydrochloric acid Although hydrochloric acid does not actually digest anything, that is, it does not break apart nutrient chemical bonds, it performs these specific functions that aid digestion. Hydrochloric acid activates the enzyme precursor pepsinogen to an active enzyme, pepsin, and provides an acid medium that is optimal for pepsin activity. It aids in the breakdown of connective tissue and muscle fibers, reducing large food particles into smaller particles. It denatures protein, that is, it uncoils proteins from their highly folded final form, thus exposing more of the peptide bonds for enzymatic attack. Along with salivary lysozyme, hydrochloric acid kills most of the microorganisms ingested with food, although some do escape and continue to grow and multiply in the large intestine. Pepsinogen, once activated, begins protein digestion. The major digestive constituent of gastric secretion is pepsinogen, an inactive enzymatic molecule produced by the chief cells. Pepsinogen is stored in the chief cell cytoplasm within the secretory vesicles known as zymogen granules, from which it is released by exocytosis on appropriate stimulation. When pepsinogen is secreted into the gastric lumen, hydrochloric acid cleaves off a small fragment of the molecule, converting it to the active form of the enzyme, pepsin. Once formed, pepsin acts on other pepsinogen molecules to produce more pepsin. A mechanism where an active form of an enzyme activates other molecules of the same enzyme is called an autocatalytic, self-activating process. Pepsin initiates protein digestion by splitting certain amino acid linkages in proteins to yield peptide fragments, small amino acid chains, it works most effectively in the acid environment provided by hydrochloric acid. As pepsin can digest protein, it must be stored and secreted in an inactive form, so it does not digest the proteins of the cells in which it is formed. Therefore, pepsin is maintained in the inactive form of pepsinogen until it reaches the gastric lumen, where it's activated by hydrochloric acid secreted into the lumen by a different cell type. The parietal cells actively secrete hydrochloric acid into the lumen of the gastric pits, which in turn empty into the lumen of the stomach. As a result of this hydrochloric acid secretion, the pH of the luminal contents falls as low as 2. Hydrogen ion and chloride are actively transported by separate pumps in the parietal cell's plasma membrane. Hydrogen ion is actively transported against a tremendous concentration gradient with the hydrogen ion concentration being as much as 3 million times greater in the lumen than in the blood. Chloride is secreted by a secondary active transport mechanism against a much smaller concentration gradient of only 1.5 times. Mucus The surface of the gastric mucosa is covered by a layer of mucus derived from the surface epithelial cells and mucus cells. This mucus serves as a protective barrier against several forms of potential injury to the gastric mucosa. By virtue of its lubricating properties, mucus protects the gastric mucosa against mechanical injury. It helps protect the stomach wall from self-ingestion because pepsin is inhibited when it comes in contact with a layer of mucus coating the stomach line. Being alkaline, Mucus helps protect against acid injury by neutralizing hydrochloric acid in the vicinity of the gastric lining, but it does not interfere with the function of hydrochloric acid in the lumen. The pH in the lumen may be as low as 2. The pH in the layer of mucus adjacent to the mucosal cell surface is about 7. Intrinsic factor Intrinsic factor Another secretory product of the parietal cells, in addition to hydrochloric acid, is important in the absorption of vitamin B12. This vitamin can be absorbed only when in combination with intrinsic factor. Binding of the intrinsic factor, vitamin B12 complex, with a special receptor located only in the terminal ileum, the last part of the small intestine, triggers a receptor-mediated endocytosis of the complex at this location. Vitamin B12 is essential for the normal formation of red blood cells. In the absence of intrinsic factor, vitamin B12 is not absorbed, 
so erythrocyte production is defective in pernicious anemia results. Pernicious anemia is typically caused by an autoimmune attack against the parietal cells. This condition is treated by regular injections of vitamin B12, thus bypassing the defective digestive tract absorptive mechanism. Regulatory Pathways Influencing Parietal and Sheaf Cells In addition to the gastric exocrine secretory cells, other secretory cells in the gastric glands release endocrine and paracrine regulatory factors instead of products involved in the digestion of nutrients in the gastric lumen. Endocrine cells, known as G-cells, found in the gastric pits, only in the pyloric gland area, secrete the hormone gastrin into the blood. D-cells, which are scattered in glands near the pylorus but are more numerous in the duodenum, secrete the paracrine somatostatin. Enterochromaffin-like ECL cells dispersed among the doxentic mucosa secrete the paracrine histamine. These three regulatory factors from the gastric pits, along with the neurotransmitter acetylcholine (ACH), primarily control the secretion of gastric digestive juices. Parietal cells have separate receptors for each of these chemical messengers. Three of them, acetylcholine, gastrin, and histamine, are stimulatory. The fourth regulatory agent, somatostatin, inhibits hydrochloric acid secretion. Acetylcholine and gastrin also increase pepsinogen secretion through their stimulatory effect on the chief cells. Acetylcholine It's a neurotransmitter released from the intrinsic nerve plexus in response to both short local reflexes and vagal stimulation. Acetylcholine stimulates both the parietal and chief cells as well as the G cells and ECL cells. Gastrin the G cells secrete the hormone gastrin into the blood in response to protein products in the stomach lumen and in response to acetylcholine. Like secretin and CCK, gastrin is a major gastrointestinal hormone. After being carried by the blood back to the body and fundus of the stomach, gastrin stimulates the parietal and chief cells, promoting secretion of a highly acidic gastric juice. In addition to directly stimulating the parietal cells, Gastrin indirectly promotes hydrochloric acid secretion by stimulating the enterochromaffin-like ECL cells to release histamine. Gastrin is the main factor that brings about increased hydrochloric acid secretion during meal digestion. Gastrin is also trophic, growth-promoting, to the mucosa of the stomach and small intestine, thereby maintaining their secretory capabilities. Histamine a paracrine is released from the enterochromaffin-like cells in response to acetylcholine and gastrin. Histamine acts locally on nearby parietal cells to speed up hydrochloric acid secretion and potentiates, makes stronger, the actions of acetylcholine and gastrin. Acetylcholine and gastrin both operate through inositol triphosphate 3 calcium second messenger pathways. Histamine activates a camp second messenger pathway to bring about its effects. These messengers all bring about increased secretion of hydrochloric acid by promoting the insertion of additional hydrogen potassium ATPase into the parietal cell's plasma membrane. A pool of these pumps is stored within the parietal cell and intracellular vesicles, which fuse with the luminal membrane via exocytosis to add more of these active carriers to the membrane as needed to increase hydrochloric acid secretion. Somatostatin it's released from the D cells in response to acid. It acts locally as a paracrine in negative feedback fashion to inhibit secretion by the parietal cells, G cells, and ECL cells, thus turning off the hydrochloric acid secreting cells and their most potent stimulatory pathway.